Hello and welcome to today's video. If you don't know me, I'm Victoria. Welcome to my channel. And I'm really excited to be filming this video about the Dyson Airwrap that I recently got. I am so excited about this. This is such an amazing product that has literally changed my life. So I can't wait to talk to you guys about how this has literally changed my life. And this is a game changer. If you are considering buying this, I am just immediately gonna say do it. I'm gonna show you how I use it, why I love it so much, and how it has literally changed my life. Like I'm not even being dramatic. And yeah, if you wanna see how I do my hair, how I do my curly blow dry, uh, my like kind of review of the Dyson Air app, then just keep watching. And yeah. I also wanna say a quick thank you to Imim for sponsoring this video. I really wanted to show you guys this. So I know that a lot of my followers are around the same age as me, 20s to like mid 30s, I would say my main age range is. And this is a product that I know you guys are gonna literally love. So obviously when you get to your 20s, you should kind of start using anti-aging products because obviously, as the name suggests, they're anti-aging. You can't kind of undo aging. So I feel like when you kind of get to your 20s, it's the perfect time to be using anti-aging products. I've been using them for a few years now to try and prevent wrinkles. So this is the Imim Firming and Sculpting Neck Cream that I've been using for a little while now. And I'm not kidding you guys. I don't know if it was a placebo effect, but the first time I used this, it literally looked like my neck had been airbrushed. I had a nightmare the day before I first used this about having a really saggy neck for some reason. It was so weird. I had a dream that my neck was all like saggy and wrinkly and droopy and it literally scared me. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I feel like your neck is like a dead giveaway to how old you are. I once went on a date with a woman that was in her 50s and she'd had Botox and stuff, her face looked great, but her neck was where you could tell her age. And I feel like that is the case for a lot of people because people kind of skip over the neck area and just focus on the face. But I feel like the neck, you can always tell how old somebody is. So this neck cream has a lot of amazing ingredients, including like hyaluronic acid, hydrolyzide, collagen, I think is how you say it. And obviously collagen is there to help like reproduce skin cells and collagen is in your skin to help with elasticity and aging and stuff like that. As you get older, you lose a lot of collagen out of your skin. So I just take a small amount, literally this much. You don't need too much of it. A little bit goes a very long way. I like to rub it into my palm a little bit to wake up all of the active ingredients before actually putting it onto my skin. So I like to apply the cream to my neck like this and then I will use these two fingers to rub it in. I just give myself a little bit of like a neck massage. So I kind of go round and up towards my ears and then I just like to go from the base of my neck upwards. You always want to push cream upwards whether you're putting it on your neck or your face. You're always going to use an upwards motion and not drag it down because that will cause more wrinkles. Thank you so much to Imim for sponsoring this video. I literally love your product. I can't wait to try more. And you guys should definitely check this out. Literally, your neck is the first thing to age. I, I think you can see on camera that my neck looks more like blurred out and just like firm. Like my neck feels nice. Like it feels like, I had some like deep set wrinkles in there that I feel like are slowly starting to fade. I don't know if you can tell on camera, but I can tell in person. So this will be linked in the description. Thank you so much to Imin for sponsoring and let's get on with the Dyson review. Okay, so not only am I going to show you how I use the Dyson, um, explain to you why I love it and why I would recommend it, I'm also gonna show you how I do my hair from like start to finish. So I'm just gonna go grab my products out of the bathroom and show you what I use. So I'm gonna show you the products I use on my hair before and during washing. And then once I'm out of the shower, I will show you the products that I use when I'm like adding like heat protectant and serums and stuff like that to my hair. So I have done a lot of hard work and investigations in into what the best products are for my hair. So just a bit of a backstory. I'm a natural blonde. Um, I don't know if you can see. Yeah, you can. If I lift my hair, you can definitely see. Yeah, there you go. That's the blonde coming through. It's not very noticeable. I like to keep on top of my roots as much as I possibly can um, because nobody likes having roots. So I have tried, I'm gonna say around 20, different shampoos and conditioners, high-end expensive brands to try and find the ones that I really like and the ones that work for my hair. And I feel like I finally found them. So the first product that I absolutely love and swear by is the Philip Kingsley Elasticizer. I wanna go ahead and give a disclaimer saying that None of the products that I'm showing are the cheapest, but I feel like your hair care is almost as important, if not as important, as your skincare. Um, for me, I want thick, luscious hair. I'm really focusing on trying to get my hair thicker at the minute, so I'm doing all I can to help that. I also use colour on my hair. I have done since I was like 12 years old, so that is literally like a decade's worth of damage to my hair. Um, so I just want to say that really quickly. I've been damaging my hair for a very long time. I dye it monthly and I just want to make sure that I maintain it and look after it as much as I possibly can. So 
for me, there's no point me getting a £250 colour for me to put £2 shampoo and conditioner on it, if that makes sense. Like, a £2 conditioner isn't going to maintain my hair. The first product I like to use is the Philip Kingsley Elasticizer. This is actually invented for Audrey Hepburn, which I think is a really fun fact. Um, I love this product. It basically adds elasticity to your hair and stops the breakage. I used to get a lot of breakage, and I noticed that my hair would kind of, like, snap off, kind of, like, half way down um and since i've been using this i have not had that i have gone through so many of these and i just started buying the big um 500 ml bottle because it's huge it lasts i get two of these a year it lasts me around six to seven months so that's like a hundred pound a year i don't think it's that bad you can get this on sale so i would say keep your eye out i will link the cheapest one i can find in the description but i really recommend this product to help with breakage softness um just like the durability of your hair i suppose now my shampoo and conditioner i have gone through a lot um i used to use kerastase that was very expensive and i don't feel like i got the results that i wanted to from such an expensive shampoo and conditioner the ones that i'm using currently and have been using for a long while now are the purology serious color care in the hydrate range um, I have very dry hair. I have naturally curly hair as well. Very, very curly hair. I'll put a little video picture here of what my hair looks like naturally. It's been curly since I was a very young child. I actually started going bald on the back of my head when I was a kid because my hair was curly and getting knotty as I was sleeping. So my mum had to buy me a silk pillowcase. I still have silk pillowcases now, as you can see. Um, I don't like sleeping on cotton pillowcases. Not only do they give you wrinkles, they're also quite damaging to your hair. I will link my favourite silk pillowcases in the description too. I really recommend them. This shampoo and conditioner I've just found works really, really well. I'd say these last me about, let me think four months i'd say four months time and i think it's about 30 pound for the two so i don't think that's too bad i also wanted to mention i wash my hair only once a week i try to minimize how often i wash my hair it's not good to wash your hair too often because you strip away the natural oils so i wash mine once a week and these are the products that i use after the conditioner as i mentioned i have very dry hair so i like to use the aussie miracle moist conditioner and i leave this in for like three to five minutes i suppose and i like to leave this in for like three to five minutes kind of like a hair mask it's not a hair mask but i like to use it like that i feel like it just adds a little bit of you know softness to my hair another product i like to use on a weekly basis is the l'oreal hair mask i literally just ran out but i will put on screen the one that i use i use this every time i wash my hair like i said once a week and the one that i use is the l'oreal professional Ceri expert absolute repair gold mask um it's 15.99 on amazon and that's where i like to get it from because it has next day delivery i've ordered mine to come tomorrow but i couldn't wait to film this video because i'm washing my hair today Again, I will link everything in the description that I am using. So they are all of the products I use on my hair when it is wet. I like to let my hair mask sit for at least 20 minutes. Um, if you can sleep in the hair mask, that's even better. If a hair mask is out of your budget and you're thinking, I don't know what to use on my hair, I can't afford to spend £16 on a hair mask, I completely understand that. And if you can't afford to use more luxurious um, shampoos and conditioners, I do have an alternative for you guys, so please don't worry. The two things that I would highly recommend for your hair if you cannot afford really expensive shampoos and conditioners, because I know I'm not going to lie to you guys, I come from a very, very poor family. We used to use the cheapest shampoo and conditioner we could find. Um, literally, I'll put a picture on screen of the one we used to use. It was like a pound a bottle, and that is all my mum could afford, and I completely understand that. So something that I would say to get a hold of if you can't afford um, hair masks or expensive shampoos and conditioners or treatments is to grab yourself a bottle of castor oil. Um, this bottle lasts a very long time. It's quite inexpensive. I feel like it can be affordable to quite a lot of people. Um, and all I do with this is I coat my hair in it. I pop it in a bun using an elastic um, like no breakage hair bobble. I keep these in my bedside table. Um, and if my hair is ever feeling dry or like it needs some hydration, I will just coat my hair in this slather it on not only does it help with hair growth you can use it on your eyebrows and eyelashes to grow them longer and thicker um it really softens the hair and hydrates it so i'll just sleep in that and then wash my hair as normal the next day if the castor oil is again out of your budget i think it's about six or seven pounds for the castor oil if that is out of your budget i would highly recommend using olive oil you can get a big bottle like literally this big for like two pound from aldi so i feel like that is affordable to most people literally that big and you just coat your hair in it the same you would with the castor oil leave it on for as long as possible try to sleep in it if you can and that will act as a hair mask and really soften your hair i actually 
actually got the olive oil tip from an Indian friend of mine. I'm sure you guys have noticed that a lot of Indian women have absolutely beautiful, thick, shiny, soft hair. And one of my really good friends said to use olive oil. I didn't know this, but um, an olive tree and olive oil is mentioned in the Quran a lot of times and it is known as like a miraculous um, oil and uh, like food I suppose it says to like eat it as much as you can and rub it into your body because it is like the tree of like God I didn't know this but apparently this is a trick that a lot of people have been using for a very long time and I've got to say since I've been using it I have noticed that my hair is very soft and it's made a massive difference and because it is so cheap it's like literally accessible to everybody so I would definitely recommend using that so I'm going to take you into the bathroom so that we can go and apply the Philip Kingsley elasticizer together and I will show you how I do it Okay, so we are now in the bathroom and I'm going to show you how I apply my elasticizer. Sorry if it's echoey in here. I'm redecorating so the walls are quite bare. I'm going to take my hair out of these clips. There we go. And I'm going to brush them through with my wet brush from Wet Brush Pro. This is the only hairbrush I use on my hair because as you can see, the bristles are very separated. It doesn't um, like hinder your curls or anything like that if you've got curly hair. It will just brush through and not get rid of the curls if that makes sense so i just brush through my hair like so make sure it's completely detangled i also like to kind of push on my scalp as much as i can just kind of give myself a little bit of like not a head massage but obviously stimulating your scalp with blood flow helps your hair grow there we go you can see that my hair is really greasy by the end of the week my hair is definitely ready for a wash and I usually wear it up for the last day or two depending if I've been sweaty or working out or whatever the case may be. I'm going to turn the tap on now so you won't be able to hear me but what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet the brush and then brush my hair because this needs to be applied to damp hair. This is also the only brush I would use on my hair while it's wet. It's not good to brush your hair while it's wet but this one's fine. Obviously it's a wet brush. Okay, so as you can see, my hair is damp but not wet. I've kind of brushed it up to the top as much as I can. And I'm just going to use, I'm just going to put one pump on my hand for now. Run that into my fingers and then I will start going through my hair with it, focusing on the ends. I feel like a lot of hair products you do focus on the ends as much as possible. And for me, obviously this is an elasticizer, so if you notice that you get breakage like here, focus it there. But for me, it's kind of from here down. And then start working upwards, like so. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. There we go. And make sure I've got it all off my fingers, because obviously this is an expensive product. I try not to waste any. I'll give it another quick brush through, just try and make sure the product is distributed as much as possible. And what I will do is I will just stick it into a bun. I feel like buns work the best because it just locks the product in. And I will walk around like a little egg for the time being. And I will leave that on for 20 minutes minimum. Sometimes I sleep in it. Um, sometimes I'll do a workout while it sits, which I think is what I'm going to do now. Um, and my workouts usually last about an hour. So once I've done that, I will jump in the shower and start washing my hair. But obviously in the shower, I will use my shampoo and conditioner that I showed you, then my Miracle Moist from Aussie. Leave that on five minutes and then I'm done in the shower. Um, I try not to use water that's too hot because that is damaging to your hair and I always make sure that I rinse with cold water to close the pores and like follicles, if that's the right word, in your hair so it doesn't get damaged. Hello, okay so I'm out the shower now, don't be scared by my appearance, I like to put a face mask on while I'm drying my hair because it takes like, not too long, it takes about 20 minutes I suppose to dry and curl my hair which is amazing so with the dyson one of the things that i really like is that you have to let your hair dry air dry on its own or you can use a blow dryer setting on it and you need to dry it until it's about i'd say 80 to 90 percent dry so i like to use this head wrap towel this is from naughty hair care um this is my favorite one i've ever ever used i've used some cheaper ones but this one is honestly the best ever used so i'll link it in the description as you can see my hair is still pretty wet um i've probably left this for about an hour now after getting out the shower um and this is what it looks like it's pretty wet way too wet to be using on the dyson so i will show you what i do now so i like to brush it out with this same wet brush this is the only one that i use on my hair when it is wet because it causes little to no damage and obviously be really gentle with your hair as you are brushing it out because you don't want to cause any breakage. The reason I tell people that the air wrap changed my life is because of how much it's cut down my drying and styling time. So before what I was doing was I was showering. It takes me about, 
I'd say an hour to wash my hair because I leave a 20 minute product on, then I wash it, then I condition it, then I add a hair mask and leave it on for about 20 minutes. So all in all it takes me about an hour to wash my hair and use all the products on it that I do in the shower. Then I was getting out the shower, I was doing a curly blow dry on my hair which takes a very long time because I did each piece individually with a round brush and a hair dryer. Not only was that really really tiring on my arms, it took such a long time to dry it. It took such a long time to dry it. Then I was going in with a curler, curling all my hair and putting my hair into pin curls. So as you've just heard, that that's a lot of steps. Um, I'm using a lot of heat on my hair. I'm using heat on my hair from pretty much the second I get out of the shower um, to the second I put it into pins. And I'm literally using two different heat devices. I'm adding loads of heat to my hair, damaging it loads. It literally took me about four hours to wash, dry and pin curl my hair, which, who wants that? So now it takes me about an hour to wash my hair, that hasn't changed, and I'd say it takes me between half an hour and an hour to dry my hair, depending on what I'm doing with it with the Dyson. Depending on what I want to achieve with my hair, sometimes I'll go through and just curl it and do like a big curly style and um, wear that for the week. Sometimes I will do a curly blow dry, it really really depends um, on what I have planned that week. If I have a lot of events, I will do like a big like all over curl using these. I use the bigger curl barrels. Um, these are pretty much just the right size for me. So you have the smaller curl barrels and you can see that there's a massive difference in size. These are obviously much tighter curls, these are obviously much bigger curls. The amount of time that has been cut out of my hair drying and styling routine is insane. Um, and I feel like I used to hate washing my hair, I used to just dread it and put it off and put it off and put it off. Because it took up all night. It's literally, what time is it now? It's like 20 past 10 and if I didn't have the Dyson and I got out the shower at 20 past 10 I would be so upset <laughs> because I know I'd be up until at least 2 o'clock doing my hair. It just took a ridiculous amount of time. I also find that my hair feels a lot more nourished and hydrated for a longer period of time because I'm using less heat. Like the heat damage on my hair is minimal because I dry it and curl it in one go and the heat on the Dyson is not too hot. Um, and it's just the right amount. Like I feel like there's so little damage being done to my hair that it's really saving my hair and I'm just, yeah, it's amazing. So while my hair's drying, I'll just talk you through what you get in the air wrap kit. So obviously you get the leather box, which is lovely. You can really tell that you've got a luxury product when you, um, God, did you know this? When you feel this because it's just absolutely beautiful. So obviously you get the leather case with the little lid that is engraved with Dyson. Uh, the top of the box is also engraved with Dyson. Inside you get obviously the actual like air wrap itself. To add an attachment you literally just pop it on, it's magnetic and then to get it off you pull this down at the back and just pop it off. There is a compartment for every single tool so this is the hair dryer. Um, I don't think you need any other blow dryer once you've got this you don't need another hair dryer, like you really don't, this works wonders. Down here is the filter, so you can actually take this off. Um, I always leave it on. So, <laughs> I was once using this and a little red light came up right here, and I was like, oh my god, have I broken it? Um, because it turned off, it just like turned off, and no air was coming out, and it wouldn't turn back on, and the light was just flashing. So if that happens to you, it just means that the filter needs cleaning. So you get this little um, circle. So you have this little circle that you just twist round, the filter until it's clean and there are little bristles in the inside that just clean out the filter so you just give it a good twist make sure that there's no dust in there and there you go it's clean so other than that you get the two small curlers you have one barrel that goes towards your face I can never tell which one that's far away and then that's towards if you swap them over um, I watched a girl on YouTube say that you can only use one barrel on one side, like she said, you can only use it on this side of your head and it won't work. That is not true. What the arrows mean is the air will blow either this way or this way. So if you want curls towards your face, you would use this one. I know some people like to have it curling towards their face. If you want it away from your face, you'll use the other one. You can use both on both sides of your head. There's no like, you can use it wherever you want. Um, I also like to use it up here. You can just look at the arrows. That would be curling away from my face. You'll see how I do it in a minute. 
um, but they can be used on either side of your head. It's either towards or away. So if, if you've heard that, that's not true. <laughs> then I've got the bigger barrels ones that I use. I personally don't think I will ever use these. Um, I feel like this type of curl, please don't be offended if you use this. I feel like this type of curl is a very young, youthful, fun type of curl. So when I have children, this is what I would use on their hair to curl it because I feel like it'd make that more like really tight, ringlet-esque curl. Then you have the brushes. I'm honestly not 100% sure what these are for because I don't use them. Um, these are for straight hair, I would imagine. I think one is for thicker hair and one is for thinner hair. That's what I've seen. Don't hold me to it, but obviously if you want a straight look, you can brush it out. If you have very curly hair, if you have very, very curly hair, you can use these to kind of brush it out to kind of dry it straight and then go in with the curling tools. And then lastly, you get the round brush, which for me is the perfect size. I absolutely love this. It's just amazing. Um, and this helps with volume. So I'll show you how I use this to achieve volume at the roots. That is everything you get in the kit. I absolutely 100% recommend it. The thing with this is people see the price tag and they're like, oh my God, that is so expensive. But you've got to remember that you're getting a hair dryer, a big barrel curler, a slim barrel curler, a straightener and a round brush in one. So if you add all of that up, how much would it come to? Like GHD straighteners are like what, 150 pounds. A good set of curlers are probably about 100 pounds. So you add two of those on you're already at 350 quid. Then you've got the hairdryer on top and then you've got a round brush on top of that. So if you look at it like that, it really makes sense. I am never going to need another hair tool. There is nothing that I want to do with my hair that I cannot do with this. Um, if I want it curly, if I want it straight, if I want to blow dry, if I want it really, really tight, if I want it wavy, I can do literally all of those things. For me, how much this is gonna save my hair is so worth it. Um, this is not sponsored by Dyson, this is just my honest opinion. I've had loads of people ask me what I think about it and it is actually life changing. Like, it takes so little time for me to do my hair, it's just amazing. And the fact that this is all I will ever need, it's in one case, it's big enough for me to keep my hair products in there, so it's really good for travel. Um, there's enough space in this, I'll show you inside the compartments. So up here you have different sections for all of the colours and then this bit here, obviously it's black so it's hard to see. This is where the uh, actual like air app tool sits. And underneath here, I like to put my um, hair oils and my sprays and stuff like that. And they just fit in really nicely. So all of my hair products are in one little box. Um, it just makes sense to me. It really does. Um, yeah, I really love it. It's something that I think you should invest in and something that I think you will really, really like. Some people don't get on with it for the first few tries, but if you watch enough videos, you really should. Um, but yeah, if you're on, if you're in between deciding whether to get it or whether not to get it, just do it. You will not regret it. It's amazing. It's like changed my life. It's made everything so much faster and I love it. It's just such a good tool to have and something that I'm so happy with. This is honestly the best hair dryer, the best curlers everything the best i've ever used of all of it because it's just incredible and this also lasts me all week when i used to do my pin curls they would probably start dropping out and going a bit funny in about the three day mark but because my hair has dried and set in that curl it really really lasts so yeah that is all i have to say about the dyson if you're in between getting it i would really recommend it i know it can seem a little bit pricey but think about how much a hair dryer straighteners two sets of curlers and a round brush is going to cost my round brush costs like 30 quid from ghd so oh my god this it's worth it it really is worth it i know it seems like a really extravagant out there price to pay for an item but when you actually look at the technology it's the only one of its kind it's the best of anything similar to it on the market and I love it. I don't know how you couldn't love it. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to dry my hair and I'm actually gonna do a voiceover for this section because I feel like it will just be a lot easier because obviously it does make noise. I will quickly show you what it sounds like on um, so that you can tell how loud it is because I know some people are curious about that. To me, I don't think it is louder than a hair dryer. I think it's quieter than a hair dryer. Before I do that, I'm gonna spray on all of my products and apply them all. One thing that I am missing is my Moroccan oil. I use it every single time I wash my hair and then throughout the week, if my hair is looking a little bit dry, I also add some into the palm of my hands and just gently rake it through the ends of my hair. It just kind of sets the curls back in and just adds a little bit more life to my hair so that I can last the full week. 
So, okay, let's start with this. Um, I'm also gonna share some tips with you later on in the video on how to keep your curls for an entire week um, because I get so many questions about it and how to like maintain it and like prevent damage and stuff like that because yeah, I've got loads of tips for you guys. First product I'm gonna be spraying in is the L'Oreal L Net Satin and this is heat protectant styling spray um, and this is ideal for a blow dry. Obviously with the air wrap, it's pretty much always a blow dry in a way because you're using like a blow dry heat to style your hair. This protects up to 230 degrees Celsius, which is like, don't ever use heat higher than that on your hair. It locks out frizz and flyaways. Um, and this just really helps hold a blow dry as well. So I give this a little shake and then just spray all through the lengths of my hair. You can see like round here, my hair's starting to dry and get its like curl. So this is when I like to start going with the air wrap. Make sure I've got that all the way through. Okay. The next product I'm using is the Aveda Thickening Tonic. Um, it instantly thickens for a fuller style. I love this stuff. As you can probably hear, I've not got much left in there. This just adds thickness and a boost and a little bit of like oomph to the roots and stuff like that in your hair. So I like to spray this through. I like to add a tiny bit to the roots. I just section my hair in a few different places and just add a little bit of a spray there to the roots. Now I'm going to go in with this. This is from Naughty Hair Care and this is the To The Rescue range and it is their anti-frizz serum for dry and damaged hair with sweet almond and argan oil. So I add two pumps of that to my hands, rub it all the way through and I start at the ends and then work my way up. This smells really, really nice. Um, I don't ever really put products on the roots unless it's like a um, volumizing product um, because otherwise you add the grease that you don't want there. So I will just add that through there. Also, sorry if my armpits look really light. I waxed myself earlier and ripped my fake tan off. <laughs> don't think I did a good job. The last product that I like to use is the Oliver James Keep It Real um, Volumizing Spray. This is actually from my friend's brand. If I can find a link, I will link it below, but I know he has been trying to launch this product this year, but because of coronavirus, there might be some sort of delay. So I like to use this. This is the 10 times volumizing spray. He does have one for even bigger hair if you like that. So. I, with this one, I like to add a few partings into my hair and give it a little shake. This range smells beautiful, by the way. And I will just spray that in multiple places throughout the hair. Like so. Personally, I like a lot of volume. Obviously, if you don't like volume, then don't use a volumizing spray. I like big, bouncy blow dries. Look at my blonde roots. Ah, I need to dye my hair. Now I'm going to brush through my hair just to make sure the product is as evenly distributed as possible. I'm going to turn the blow dry setting on, show you how loud it is and then we will switch to voiceover. Not too loud, I don't think. Um, I feel like a hair dryer is a lot louder than this. This is where the air blows out. The pink side, nothing's there. Like, you can put your hands through, it's fine. So, there you go. Okay, we're now into voiceover. So the first thing I do is I flip my head upside down using the blow dryer tool and I will just start drying my hair. Um, I really focus this at the roots because I think you need your roots, I would say 100% dry. Then I will go in with my hairbrush and just brush my hair out, make sure there are no tangles in there for when I start um, obviously sectioning it. The first section I do is actually just above my ears. Um, I think this is just the easiest way to do your hair. I do my hair in a multiple different sections and this is where I do the first one. So I will just section off that bottom piece and then I use one of these finger clips to clip the hair up. I'll link it in the description. Then what I do is I use the round brush tool and I start adding some volume to the root. So I will add the round brush right at the root of the hair and lift upwards and then twist away from my face. Um, something to keep in mind is I am constantly curling away from my face. I never at any point curl towards my face. It is always away. 
I do that on both sides and I do that on every single section of hair. I will kind of do my hair as if I am going to do a curly blow dry with a round brush. So I will add some volume at the roots and then I will go down with it and twist it backwards. After doing that, you can see that my hair is big, which is what I'm saying here. You get a lot of lift at the roots when you do this. Then I will add on the little curling tool, the biggest barrel, like I said earlier, the one that I use. I will twist my hair up. I hold it about two inches away from the end and then it just catches and zwips right up your hair. Um, I leave it for about 10 seconds, I suppose, until I can feel that it's fully dry. After I've done that, I will just pop it onto a cool blast, leave it for 10 seconds and then turn it off and take my hair out. Um, one thing that I do want to say is don't try and take your hair out while it's still turned on. Make sure you turn it off before you take your hair out, if that makes sense. And then I will just pop it into a little clip. Like I say, I pin curl my hair and then I just repeat this process all the way over. Obviously, when I switch my head, obviously when I switch the other side of my head, I switch the uh, curling tool so that it's facing away from my head again. I'll split my hair into two sections and then start going all over again. I use sections that I would say are about an inch wide, I suppose. I don't use ones that are too thin or too thick because I don't like my hair to be really, really curly. Um, and as you can see, I just kind of zwip it right at the bottom. I feel like zwipping is the best <laughs> term for it because it kind of goes zoop, like right up your hair, which I love about this. You can literally use one hand. I know I'm using two here, but you can use one hand. It's so quick. Um, and like I said, I will just have it on hot until the curl is completely dry and then I will do a quick um, cold blast. The cold blast is just there to make sure that the hair is set because once the hair is cold, it means it's set in the curl. For the second section, I will just pop my hair into a parting just above my eyebrow. I use the arch of my eyebrow as kind of like a guideline and just go around from there. Um, if your eyebrows are wonky, maybe don't do that, but you get the gist of where it is on my head. Again, I use the round brush to add a little bit of lift and volume. You can kind of see how I'm doing it to kind of lift the hair up. Um, I kind of put it right underneath and then push upwards as I pull down. Obviously, if you're not into volume, then you can just skip this step. If you don't like a lot of volume, then just skip the round brush step and go in with the curling tool. Um, but personally, I like big, bouncy hair. Again, I will split my hair into two even sections. Pin the other one to my head so it doesn't get caught up. You can just put this in your mouth if you want to, but to look professional, I pinned it to the top of my head. Um, and then I just put it right to the top. I try to get as close to my scalp as I possibly can. I do find that I can pretty much take the heat um, all the way around. And if your hair feels a little bit loose, you can do what I just did there and pull it back down the hair and then roll it back up again. Well, you don't need to roll it, but you know what I mean? Move it back towards the head. And if you feel like you've got any loose pieces of hair, just do that and it will catch properly. What I was saying is it's not too hot to have right next to your scalp, so I don't find it to be a problem. Um, I don't really feel any burning apart from when I get to my ears, and when I feel that I just put my hand over my ear to cover it. Uh, but it's not too hot to the point you're like, ah, like, you know when you've had that with like curlers and you can feel the heat? Um, you don't ever get that with this. Well, at least I don't. But I'm not tender-headed at all. So I just continue to repeat this. It's literally so easy. I like literally watch things on my laptop do things on my laptop as I'm doing it because it's just so simple and because you pretty much always have one hand free it's just really convenient. Now for the top layers I like to part these a little bit differently so the first thing I do is I obviously let my hair down and then I guide it from the sides of my mouth and then I go straight up and draw a line back. The middle top section I actually curl very differently so I like to pin that away and just focus on the sides for now. So again, I'm just going in with the round brush and brushing it how I want to. I've got quite curly bits around the front of my face because I think I mentioned earlier in the video that I've got naturally curly hair. So those curly bits can be a bit of a nightmare. So I use the round brush to kind of try and tame them. And then again, I just do the same thing, go in with the curling tool away from my face, hold it for like 10 to 15 seconds on high, hot heat. And then I will put a cold blast on, make sure the hair is completely cooled and then pop it into a pin. It's really, really easy. You can kind of see here that it's not time consuming at all because it's just so simple to do. It's just one tool to do pretty much everything, which I love. And the pins will just help it continue to set. Now we're at the top middle piece of hair and I like to use rollers for the top first two sections. So I'll show you how I do this. And this is how I kind of 
uh, get a bouncy fringe and have the curls not too tight ar- around my face. I don't like the curls to be really, really tight and big around my face because I've got quite a round head. So I feel like it makes my head look rounder. So again, I just start with the round brush. I spin it backwards. I try to get a little bit of a curl set using this first and I make sure it is dry as possible um, because like I said, it needs to be about, I would say 90% dry. And the way I do this is actually a little bit different. I like to wrap the hair round first like you would with a curler and then turn it on. For me, I just find it a little bit too difficult to, you know, make the hair catch and then roll it down to my head. This is just much easier for me. Obviously, you can do that the whole way around your head, but I feel like it would take a little bit longer. Um, So this is the only place I do that. Now for the front two sections, this is where I use the rollers. So I have a bit of a fringe, like a swoopy fringe. So I separate my fringe from this other section of hair. Again, I go in with the round brush and just brush it back, add a little bit of volume. I do like to have volume here, but just not a really tight curl. So as you can see, I wrapped it around again and then I will turn it on. And just as normal, I'll leave it for like 10 seconds and then do the cold blast until I feel like it has set. And then I just go in with my roller. As you can see here, I'm going up and down like I would with a blow dryer, if you know what I mean. If you're doing like a round brush blow dry, that's what you do with it, just kind of loosen the curl out a little bit. And then I pop my roller in, which will just help set the curl even more and give it more of a uh, looser shape, because obviously the roller is bigger than the actual pin curl itself. The roller, I feel, also helps with volume as well, which I love a bit of volume if I haven't said that enough already throughout the video. So for my fringe, I don't actually use the cooling tool, cooling tool, curling tool. I just use the round brush tool and I go forward a little bit, I go backwards a little bit and this is just to kind of help with flyaways. So I'll go forward a few times to help with the flyaways and then backwards and then I will just do a normal like uh, blow dry curl, if that makes sense. If you guys know how to do a uh, curly blow dry, then you'll know how to do this. You just kind of okay. So it is the next morning now, as you can hopefully tell. I'm just about to take out my rollers and my pin curls. I have left them for as long as I possibly can. It is now almost one o'clock the next day, so we are ready to go. Ready to take these out. I've slept in them. I've done the housework. I've done some work done some cleaning, showered, done my makeup and everything and now I'm going out so I'm going to take them out. If I wasn't going out today I would leave them in and then take them out on Monday morning. I try to leave my pins in for as long as possible to hold the curl um, but this will have done fine. So what I like to do first is spray everything with a little bit of hairspray. This is the L'Oreal Elnet Extra Strong Hold Hairspray. I love this one because it is an extra strong hold hairspray but you can just brush it out if you want to get rid of it. Uh, the only brush I use on my hair is this one because it's kind of like wide tooth. You don't like damage the curls or anything like that so I give it a quick spritz. While they're still pinned to my head. And then I start from the bottom and slowly take them out. As for how I sleep with my hair every other night after taking the pin curls out, I sleep with a Naomi bun and I use a silk scrunchie. If you don't know what a Naomi bun is, it is basically a bun right at the top of your head. You do it as high up as you possibly can and you kind of twist it loosely into a bun. I will link Naomi's Instagram in the description because she shows you how to do it and she has a full tutorial on it. Um, I've been doing that ever since I found her and it's really helped with breakage, grease, how long my hair lasts, um, not getting it all knotty and like tied up and the curls looking awful. Um, I just really recommend it and I would really recommend using a silk scrunchie because silk scrunchies prevent breakage. Um, I don't like normal bobbles because they do rip your hair in my opinion. Doing the bun really helps maintain the curls and keep them in shape and in check. And also I just wanted to mention that if you notice that your curls start dropping after like two or three days, I would say just to put your pins back in and sleep in them. So literally just grab your hair, even if it's straight, roll them back into a curl and pin it to the top of your head. Um, and then sleep in that overnight and your curls will come back and regain their shape. Because you've used the air wrap to dry them that way, if you notice your curls start fading, you can literally just put them back into pins and then it will the shape will come back which is amazing so obviously my hair looks really curly right now i will give it a little faff in a minute to get it how i like it i am very careful with my pins when i take them out and these are the clips that i use i really recommend these for doing pin curls they just work the best it's what hairdressers use um, and i'll link some below 
Everything I'm talking about in this video I will link in the description box. I know there is a lot of information in this video and that it's going to be quite long, but but this is one of my, I'd say this and my fake tan routine is like my most requested video that I've ever had. How I do my pink curls, how I make my hair last a week and how I do my fake tan. Um, so I'm trying to do it as in-depth as possible so I can answer every single question that I've ever had. <laughs> You will notice that my fringe is going to be very big. Um, I don't like how my fringe looks initially, but it does die down. And it's pretty much different every single time. So you've just got to faff with it until it's how you want it. Okay. So you can see that it's like very big, kind of like aerial. At the start, but this will slowly die down and that is pretty much how I do my hair obviously this will continue to drop throughout the day um you can kind of see here this is pretty much what it stays like this like really gorgeous bouncy blow and the thing with blow drying your fringe backwards is that you can do any type of parting um because it will just flick in the right way you can do a middle part and it will work really nicely it literally doesn't matter where you part your hair it will always work and that is pretty much everything I do to my hair. This will last me all week. Obviously the curls do drop and change throughout the week, but they pretty much stay like this. And because they're all curled in the same direction, they're all curled away from your face, when you brush them, they just go into a really nice, thick, bouncy blow, which is what I'm always after. So that is how I do my big, bouncy blow. Some people tell me I have hair like a middle-aged woman, but I like it love that like bouncy blow dry i just think it's really classic it always looks good it's always a go-to hairstyle for me you can just do so much with it if i want to put it in like a clip it looks really nice because i've got like my fringe and everything and yeah i'm just a fan of it i think it always looks nice no matter the occasion and it's just i don't know I think it's the best hairstyle you can do. It's just so wearable for so many different things. That is my review on the Dyson Air app. Honestly, I think it is an incredible product that you guys should definitely purchase. If you are thinking about it, just go for it. You will only ever need one heat tool when you've got the Dyson Air app, so it just saves a lot of space, it saves a lot of money, and it's just a product that I think will just keep on going, and there's just so much you can do with it. I mean, this hair is, like, so easy to do. It takes me such... A little amount of time it's just unbelievable so if you're thinking about getting it definitely purchase i know it can seem like a high price tag but as i said if you look at it as a hair dryer two curlers and straighteners and a round brush i don't think it's that expensive i really don't for what you get with it and how much time it's cut out for me it's honestly i know it sounds dramatic but it's changed my life it takes me such little time to do my hair and like I don't know, if I'm having a bad hair day, I can literally just wet my hair with a brush like I do before I apply the Philip Kingsley. I can just wet my hair and then just quickly blast it with the air wrap to add some more curls to it. It's so easy and convenient, I absolutely love it. And I really hope you guys enjoyed this video, found it informative. Um, I know that people have been asking me on a tutorial on how I do my hair for the longest time, so here it is, finally. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you really soon in a new video. Bye.